Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll understand the atomic size trend. Before that, let's understand the basis to understand the atomic size trend. The first thing we should note is that the due to the presence of electron in the inner cell, the outer shell will not experience the full positive charge of the nucleus but the experience will be lower and this is called the partial screening of positive charge by the nucleus of inner cell. For example, this is my nucleus and this have we have different shells here, right? So this electron will not experience the full positive charge from this nu uh, nucleus. This charge will be screened by these shells, okay? So they it will have some ZFE. Okay, Z is the full nuclear charge, what it will experience is the Z effectively. Okay, and this is called shielding effect. And we'll talk about the shielding effect, the shielding effect of S, P, and D orbital. And despite the shielding effect, actually, despite the shielding effect of the outer electrons from the nucleus of the inner shell electrons, the attractive force experienced by the outer shell electrons increase with the increase in negative charge. When if there is a shielding effect, the more you increase the charge, the Z effect increase. We have seen that. And thus the energy of interaction between the nucleus and the electron decreases with increase in atomic number. This is something we have seen. The nucleus and the electron, right, the interaction between them decreases with increase in atomic number. So we talk about the atomic size, we have we have wonder ball radius where this is again, in that case, we imagine the radius of an imaginary hard sphere and where there is no bond formation. So we, we found this, get this bond of radius, it is pretty big in size as compared to other radius. Covalent radius, actually, if you see, they are in the bond, in the covalent bond, it's a measure of one size of an atom that forms a part of a covalent bond. And then similarly, we have an ionic radius. Ionic radius is again uh, the radius where we have the ionic bond. So Wonder Ball radius is big, for example, in this case, if you see these two atoms are not linked together, right? So the Wonder Ball radius is the blue one. And in this case, if you see these two atoms are uh, bonded together, the, so the radius is the red one. If you see that there's a difference in the red and the blue one. The blue one is a bigger one, the red one is a smaller one. Typically, if we get this Wonder Ball radius for the noble metal, they don't react and they don't form bonds. But typically, when we talk about the atomic size, we talk about the average atomic size of all these kind of radius or average atomic radius is nothing but you take the average of all the atomic radius for a given given metal that forms with different compounds and come up with the average atomic radius. Let's talk about an important concept called shielding effect. See, if there's a nucleus here and it has some neutrons the electrons somewhere here will not experience the full nuclear charge. The charge will be shielded by this s orbital, again my more s orbital and there is a p orbital. And then we have something called d orbital also which I have not shown in this picture. Now understand why s orbital has maximum shielding effect. Assuming this is my nucleus and it has some positive charge, huge positive charge and this positive charge actually is shielded by this s orbital. This is s orbital is spherical in shape. So since it is spherical in shape, it will actually shield the charge. Assume nucleus like uh, precious gold, let's suppose this nucleus is a precious gold, right? Now, if you are shielding with a spherical electrons, spherical cloud of electrons, do you think the protection is more? Yes. Instead of spherical electrons, if you are shielding with this kind of shape, this is p orbital. If you see the green one is my p orbital. So let me draw the p orbital in the green color. This is my p orbital actually. One p orbital. Similarly, we have one more p orbital. You can see this is a three-dimensional shape. And then I have one more p orbital, this is the third p orbital, right? So instead of 
shielding it with a spherical shape if you have this gold here let's suppose and let's suppose you are shielding in this fashion you have protection somewhere here here and somewhere in this fashion do you think this is more uh, strong or this obviously this because this is total protection here actually anybody come can come from these directions correct same thing here here you can actually penetrate from these direction so the shielding effect will be little less in case of p orbital as compared to s orbital because s orbital is spherical in shape so if you have something here it is actually totally shielded properly from all from all three dimensional directions because it is sphere, sphere. is it, it is as good as putting a, a gold or precious uh, some uh, precious article in a sphere and that is shielded and the p orbital has different structure so the shielding effect is less similarly d has all the more less shielding effect right so you must understand now that s orbital has maximum shielding effect p has less d has all the more less shielding effect now we'll see the importance of shielding effect actually okay and before that let's understand the orbital energy also we have discussed this the 3d and 4s orbital actually the energy is almost same in fact 4s has lower energy than 3d but the moment 4s gets one electron we have seen that uh, the energy rises up and then th the next electron goes in 3d so we have seen that thus understand that 3d and 4s has almost same energy now let's talk about the atomic size so if you see the atomic size trend the atomic size number actually the atomic radius decrease and then increase if you see from here to here it decrease and then again it decrease again decrease the same again decrease again decrease again decrease but after this if you see there is the increase if you see here also 195 to 175 degrees, 175 to 164 degrees, 154 degrees, 147 degrees, 146 degrees, 142 degrees, 139 degrees, and then again increased. Same thing here. Decrease, 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 it also decrease, it also, it's almost same actually I can say. So it decrease and then increase. Correct. The question is why? Why is this trend? See, one thing you should note here is, if you talk about the electronic configuration, for example, you take scandium. Scandium electronic configuration is 3d1, 4s2. So let's assume this is my s orbital. It already has two electrons. Right, this is S, and let's suppose this is my P orbital, sorry, D orbital. Here, if you note that D orbital, 3D orbital comes, and then you have 4S orbital, correct? And the best part in this case is the next electron in this is my scandium configuration. Configuration is scandium is AR this, and that's why I put argon here. This is my scandium. The next electron that is added to this. To make it titanium is the next electron will be added in p block sorry d orbital not in s orbital again to make it vanadium the next electron will again be added to d orbital again to make it chromium the next electron will again be added to d orbital so if you see here what is happening is see the atomic size will be determined by s orbital correct because that is the outermost orbital now we are pumping electrons here inside and you assume this is the figure this is my s orbital this is a three dimensional figure and this one actually you see is my d orbital the one in the blue is d orbital and the one in the red is my p orbital so in this case the electrons are more and more electrons are added in the d orbital right you are adding more and more electrons here as you go from left to right you add more and more electrons in the d orbitals so if you are adding more and more electrons to the d orbital what will happen the shielding effect will increase okay after some point of time 
see we know that this is the orbital thread one is has poor shielding effect so initially if you add one or two electrons the shielding effect won't increase that much right but as you keep add, keep on adding this electrons to this the shielding effect will increase and thus after some time what will happen is the shielding effect increases and then this electron does not experience much charge from this nucleus and thus it goes away and the atomic size increase okay so if you see the 4s has higher energy than 3d and this is 4s electron actually which is deciding the size you are adding more electrons to 3d so as you add more electrons you are adding more protons also as you are moving left to right you are adding more electrons you are adding more protons also so effective nuclear charge is increasing why because the shielding effect is poor for d orbital thus the size decrease hope you understand why the size is decreasing from left to right is as you are adding more electrons you are adding more protons also effectively effective nuclear charge is also increasing since the effective nuclear charge is also increasing the size is shrinking but after a certain point since you you have already added lot of electrons to this d orbital the d shielding becomes effective so once this d shielding becomes effective right the effective nuclear charge on this electron decreases this understand this you are adding you are moving left to right you are adding more protons but the shielding effect is poor only so effective nuclear charge on this electron is increasing this so this electron is attracted more toward this nucleus and since this electron the s electrons 4s electrons are the one which decide the size of the uh, atom the size decrease but after a certain point this d orbital is almost filled there is a repulsion here there is a repulsion here in this d orbital and uh, the shielding becomes effective because this d orbital is almost filled right and in that case the effective nuclear charge on this electron decreases why because of the good shielding effect now because the d orbital is almost filled and thus this electron goes away this electron goes away and thus the size increases because the size of these atom is decided by 4s2 electrons i'm talking about this series okay thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again